Hello everyone, welcome back. In this tutorial, we will learn the Java design patterns. We will see what are design patterns, their different types, and in the upcoming session, we will also see few of the important design patterns in detail as well. So if you are new to the channel, please support by subscribing. And if you like watching my tutorial videos, don't forget to leave a like or comment. Now without any further delay, let's start. The world of programming has faced a large number of problems and there were many solutions proposed to handle those problems. The design patterns are those best practices a programmer can use to solve common problems. These are well-proven solutions for solving a specific problem or task. Design patterns provide solutions to problems that programmers generally face during the software development. These guidelines are obtained by performing trial and error by many software developers over a large period of time. These design patterns are guidelines to solve a particular problem. None of these patterns force you to do anything regarding the implementation. There are three types of design patterns. First one is creational, then structural and behavioral design patterns. So what are creational design patterns? So creational design patterns work on the creation of the object. It provides a solution for instantiating an object in the best possible way. We can use creational patterns often in place of direct instantiation with the constructor. The creational design pattern make the creation process more adaptable and dynamic. They can particularly deal with the flexibility of object creation and the way of creating objects and initializing them. Now let's see the available design patterns under creational category. The first one is singleton pattern. So it is a creational design pattern that restricts the number of objects of a class. It ensures that there is only a one instance of the class in the JVM. Second one is a factory design pattern. It is useful when we have a superclass with multiple subclasses and we need to return one of the subclass based on an input. A factory design pattern is most suitable when there is an involvement of complex object creation steps. The factory design pattern ensures that these steps work in a centralized manner and not exposed to object composing classes. The next one is abstract factory pattern. It is almost similar to the factory design pattern and we can say it as a factory of factories. It is useful when we need another level of abstraction over a group of factories produced using factory pattern. The next one is the builder design pattern. It came into the picture to solve the problems of having many attributes in an object. It solves the problem of optional parameter and inconsistent state as well. We should use it only when we want to build different type of immutable objects using the same building process. The last one is prototype pattern. It is useful when the process of object creation is very costly and time consuming. So using this pattern, we can copy the original object to new object and then change it according to our requirements. This pattern uses a Java cloning mechanism to copy the object. Next are structural design patterns. They provide ways to create a class structure. For example, creating a large object from smaller ones using inheritance and composition. It shows us how to connect different pieces of a system together in a flexible and extensible manner. These patterns also guarantee that when one of the parts changes, the entire application structure does not need to change. It deals with the composition of objects. Now let's see the available design patterns under structural category as well. The adapter design pattern ensures that two unrelated interfaces can work together. An adapter converts one interface of a class into another interface. It allows different classes to work together that would not work together due to incompatibility of the interfaces. Then we have composite pattern. It is a structural design pattern that represents a part whole hierarchy. The composite design pattern composes the objects into tree structure. We can apply this design pattern when we need to create a structure 
such that objects in the structure that need treatment in the same way, even if they are different. Let's understand that composite design pattern with a real life example. A diagram is a structure that we know that contains objects like lines, circles, squares, etc. When we fill the drawing with a color, suppose red, all the objects in the drawing also fill with the color which we have mentioned, which is red. Even though these objects are different, but they expect the similar treatment of filling the color to red. The next one is proxy pattern. The objective of proxy pattern is to provide a placeholder for another object to provide control access to it. Proxy pattern is useful when we want to provide controlled access to functionality. Proxy is heavily used to implement the lazy loading related use cases where we do not want to create a full object until it is actually needed. Then we have flyweight design pattern. So it creates a lot of objects of a class. A flyweight is a shared object that we can use in multiple contexts simultaneously. We can apply the flyweight design pattern to reduce the load on memory by sharing the objects. As every object consumes memory space, that can be important for low memory devices. One of the best examples of flyweight pattern implementation is string pool implementation in Java. Next is facade pattern. So it helps client applications to easily interact with the system. A facade design pattern provides a unified interface to a set of interfaces in a subsystem. We can apply facade patterns to provide a wrapper interface on top of the existing interfaces to help the client application correct properly. Next, we have bridge design pattern. So when there is an interface hierarchy in both the interfaces as well as in the implementations, it decouples the interfaces from implementation. It also hides the implementation details from client programs as well. The last one under structural design pattern is the decorator design pattern. It modifies the functionality of an object at runtime. It adds additional features or behaviors to a particular instance of a class. Last are the behavioral design pattern. So what are behavioral design patterns which provide solution for achieving a better interaction between objects. They also tell how to provide loose coupling and flexibility to extend easily. Behavioral pattern deals with the behavior of objects interaction between the objects, how does an object communicate with other objects. Now let's see the available design patterns under behavioral category. So we have first template method design pattern. It creates a method stub and defers some of the steps to the implementation of subclasses. It defines the steps to execute an algorithm. It also provides a default implementation which is common to all or some of the subclasses. The mediator design pattern provides a centralized communication medium between different objects. This pattern is helpful in an enterprise application where multiple objects interact with each other. It also helps to implement loose coupling between the objects. In the chain of responsibility pattern, a client passes a request to sequence or a chain of objects. After that, the object in the chain decides which object will process that request and whether there is a need to send the request to the next object or not. For example, if we have a chain of multiple catch blocks after try, if we catch block is unable to process it, it forwards the request to the next catch block. Then an observer design pattern, it deals with the state of an object and notifies us whether there is any change in the object state. Then we have a strategy design pattern. A strategy pattern is useful when there are multiple algorithms for a particular task and also when the client decides the actual implementation during the runtime. We define multiple algorithms and allow the client application to pass the algorithm and use them as a parameters. So Collections.sort method is one of the best examples for this type of pattern that takes in the comparator as a parameter. It sorts the object in different ways based on the different implementation of comparator interfaces. Then we have command pattern. So command pattern is useful when we need to implement loose coupling in a request response model. Then we have a state design pattern. It is useful when an object changes its behavior based on its internal state. 
The next one is visitor pattern. It is helpful when we have to perform an operation on group of similar kind of objects. With the help of visitor pattern, we can move the operational logic from the objects to another class as well. We also have interpreter design pattern that defines a grammatical representation of a language and provides an interpreter to deal with its grammar. Java compiler is the best example of this pattern that interprets the Java source code into bytecode that JVM understands. Then we have iterator pattern. It is one of the behavioral pattern and it provides a standard way of traversing through a group of objects, which is most widely used in Java collection framework. And in the end, we have memento design pattern. It saves the state of an object so that we can restore it later. It implements this in such a way that there is no access to the saved state data outside the object. Now in the end, let's see the advantages of using design patterns. We can reuse the design patterns in multiple projects. They help us to define the system architecture. They also provide transparency to the design of an application. Design patterns are well known and well proven and tested solutions. They built upon the knowledge and experience of the expert software developers. Now the question is when to use the design patterns. We should use the design patterns during the analysis and requirement phase of software development lifecycle. That's it for this video. If you like it, please share your feedback and don't forget to leave a like or comment. Thanks for supporting. See you next time.